In the rugged terrain near Number 4 Tunnel, 20 miles from a remote village, a remarkable event unfolded. On a fateful Monday morning, employees of Mr. Onderdonk, along with the British Columbia Express Company's messenger, Mr. Costerton, and several gentlemen from Lytton, embarked on a daring climb up steep mountain bluffs. Their objective, to capture an extraordinary creature. This is the astounding tale of Jacko. On that morning, engineer Ned Austin was navigating the eastern end of the Nomor 4 tunnel when he spotted something unusual near the tracks. What he initially thought was a man lying asleep in close proximity to the track quickly turned into a scene of bewilderment. Reacting swiftly, Austin blew the signal to apply the brakes. The train came to an immediate standstill. To everyone's astonishment, the supposed man sprang up, uttering a sharp, quick bark before beginning to scale the steep bluff. Conductor R.J. Craig and Express Messenger Costerton, along with the baggage man and brakeman, leapt from the train. The chase was perilous, the steep incline and loose rocks making every step treacherous. After five grueling minutes, they managed to corner the creature on a narrow ledge. Crawling on his hands and knees, Craig positioned himself about 40 feet above the creature. In a calculated move, he let a small piece of loose rock fall. It struck near Jacko, stunning him just long enough to allow for capture. With the creature incapacitated, the men quickly bound him with a bell rope and safely lowered him to the ground. Their mission was a success, but the mystery of what or who they had captured was only just beginning. With Jacko safely lowered to the ground, the team wasted no time in binding him securely. Their extraordinary captive was then transported to the baggage car. Off brakes sounded, and the train resumed its journey towards Yale, carrying its mysterious passenger. News of the capture spread quickly. By the time the train reached the station at Yale, a large crowd had assembled, eager to see the so-called monstrosity. Each person in the crowd was anxious for the first look at the creature that had stirred such excitement. They had heard of the capture through a telephone call from Spoozum Flat. However, their hopes were dashed. Jacko was not to be paraded before them. Instead, he had been discreetly removed at the machine shop away from the public eye. In the secluded confines of the machine shop, Jacko was placed under the care of his new keeper, Mr. George Telbury. Telbury, tasked with understanding and managing Jacko, began to observe the creature's behaviors and needs. Jacko, though reticent, showed signs of adapting to his new environment. Jacko, as the creature had been named by his captors, stood at an unusual height of 4 feet 7 inches and weighs a solid 127 pounds. His appearance was strikingly similar to that of a gorilla, yet he possesses distinct human-like qualities. Jacko was covered in long, black, glossy hair, about an inch in length, that envelops his entire body, save for his hands and feet. This thick coat of hair lended him an almost mythical appearance. One of the most notable features is his forearms, which were much longer than those of a human. This adaptation likely contributes to his extraordinary strength. He has been observed taking hold of a sturdy stick and breaking it effortlessly by wrenching or twisting it, a feat beyond the capability of any human. Under the watchful eye of his keeper, Mr. George Telbury, Jacko's unique characteristics and behaviors were meticulously documented. Since his capture, Jacko remained reticent, communicating only through occasional noises that were a curious blend of a bark and a growl. 
Despite his initial wariness, Jacko showed signs of a growing attachment to his keeper, Mr. George Telbury. Their bond strengthened daily as Telbury carefully tended to Jacko's needs. Jacko's favorite foods included fresh berries, which he ate with visible relish, and he also enjoyed drinking fresh milk. Under the guidance of Dr. Hannington, raw meats were strictly withheld from Jacko's diet. The doctor believed that introducing such food could potentially incite savage behavior, a risk they were unwilling to take. As Jacko became more accustomed to his surroundings, plans were made for a journey to London, England. Telbury intended to exhibit Jacko, sharing this extraordinary discovery with the world. As time passed, the remarkable tale of Jacko gradually faded into obscurity. Despite the initial excitement and fervor surrounding his capture, there were no further records of the creature. It is presumed that Jacko died shortly after his capture, his fate remaining shrouded in mystery. On July 11, 1884, the British Columbian carried the news that some 200 people had gone to the jail to view Jacko. In 1958, John Green found and interviewed a man named August Castle who remembered the Jacko talk of the time, but he said his parents did not take him to the jail to see the beast. Others also remembered talk of the creature, but no one could produce any truly good evidence for Jacko. As the pages of history turn, Jacko remains a tantalizing enigma a symbol of the mysteries that lie hidden within the depths of our world, waiting to be unearthed and explored. Though Jacko may have vanished into the mists of time, his legacy lives on, a testament to the enduring allure of the unknown and the boundless depths of human imagination. Thanks for watching and remember to like subscribe and hit the notification button. We'd also like to hear your views on Bigfoot, so share your comments and check out our channel page for loads more great content. If you'd like to help us to produce and curate more Bigfoot-related documentaries, you can go to the About section of the channel page for links to support our Patreon and PayPal.